Hey guys, it's Todd Hamilton from Gavel Tech again. Uh, we've gotten some feedback from the web and uh, a lot of people are asking us about the term keywords and what does that mean. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about keywords today. Um, first, what are they? Keywords are essentially little identifiers that point Google to your site. For instance, I'll use the example of www.socks.com. If I am www.socks.com, I want people to go to Google and look for specific words and be able to find me. So how do I do that? Well, I ask myself, what would they be searching for and what are the products I offer? I've got a list of 10 possible keywords here. We've got wool socks, stockings, athletic socks, nylons, cheap socks, cotton socks, etc., etc. And you see down here, second from the bottom, I have socks that support your feet. Now, that doesn't seem much like a key word. It seems more like a sentence. And there's a term for that. They're called long tail. Um, and they're very effective because they're, they're more than one keyword appears here. Socks, support, and feet. So then we've essentially used three keywords in one statement. Now, why are these important? As stated previously, um, it's going to allow search engines to find you on the web. <clears throat> so I'm www.socks.com. I've now picked keywords that I want to be known for. How do I put those onto my page so that people can understand what it is that, that I do? Now, I want to make sure that in my content I put these keywords in, but I don't want to do what's called keyword stuffing. I don't want to have too many of them repeated over and over because Google will actually notice that and put us to the back of the pack. So within my, within my content, which we'll say is right here, on my index page, my index page is the first page that people see when they put in my URL to the browser. Um, I've got content written. And for instance, we offer wool socks, stockings. Uh, we have a wide selection of athletic socks. So we're just kind of stating our products on the front page. And we do that in an F pattern. What do I mean by F pattern? Well, there's research out there that says that people generally read websites like this with sort of a, a decreasing um, left to right pattern all the way down, which sort of looks like an F, so it's called the F. So we want to make sure that in the first couple of lines, maybe the first paragraph, we do the, the bulk of what's important so we keep people's attention. So then we've optimized our content for keywords. <clears throat> we've got our navigation down the right side of the page. And we also want to make sure we do what's called a good description. Right? Now a description is essentially what the page is about. Now, how do we get Google to understand that? In the head, which I spoke about earlier, you, you know, you put your description, your page description, which could be something like this. Uh, quality socks at bargain prices. Okay? So that may be a good title for the page. We then want to put the pipe in, and after the pipe, we want to put our URL or the name of our company, so socks.com, et cetera, et cetera. So now we're going to do a, a little bit of keyword research, and I'm going to go to my computer for that. Um, it's been great talking to you, and I'll see you in a little bit. Hello, and welcome to the second part of the Gavel Tech keyword uh, information session uh, slash tutorial. Uh, this is Todd, and we're going to discuss basically uh, how to do keyword research. So in the first part of this video, we had identified some keywords that we want to rank for. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and find out what type of competition and if those are even relevant keywords. So I'm going to the Google AdWords keyword uh, tool, which is a very good free uh, tool out there, probably one of the best in my opinion. And I'm going to look up wool socks nylon socks stockings gym socks uh, socks that support your feet we put one long tail keyword search in there so enter my captcha which is actually readable that's nice and we'll do some searching all right now we can see that in my local Google Data Center, we've got 27,000 searches for the term wool socks per month. And globally, we've got 33,100. I've always kind of questioned the global number. It seems a little low. However, there are probably on a lot of people uh, looking for, for nylon or wool socks. And you see that uh, stockings has a much higher incidence. So 1.5 million, and you've got half a million here. 
So going down, I'm going to look at some of the suggestions that they've made, men's wool socks, and I'm going to see the competition. And I see that there's a good number of searches. And for a small business like www.socks.com, I'm completely okay with some of these numbers. Going through sock yarn, that's probably not a keyword that I want. So I'm going to go through and check off what I do want. Wool socks, nylon socks. And you see that socks that support your feet, the long tail keyword has no searches. There's some brand names. There's some types of wool. I really don't want any of that. Men's wool socks, wool hiking socks, tube socks. So we'll say those are keywords we're happy with. So we're going to download the selected ones. Microsoft allows you to do it. Excuse me, Google allows you to do it in a CSV, which can be opened by Excel, Microsoft application. I'm going to save this and move on. The next thing I'm going to do is use another uh, keyword finding software. And Word Tracker um, used to have a lot of the market share in this space, and they, they still do. Um, but they're free keywords. They, they only allow you to do some basic searches. Otherwise, you have to pay for the service. So we liked uh, wool socks, and we're going to do a search for that. Okay. So you see that they blurred out some of the information that we may find relevant. They've only given us the amount of searches. Um, for a period of time and you can see that they're wool socks, smart wool socks, etc. Okay, so we see that wool socks is definitely something we want to use. Now I pay for the SEO service from SEO Moz. I think they have a nice suite and uh, I use the keyword difficulty tool to get a better idea of the difficulty of ranking for that uh, particular uh, keyword and that's going to give me a list of all of the people who are leading the ranks right now. Okay, so I see all that. There's Amazon, that's a tough customer. Um, some of these are smaller. And I see that this is a flash page. Now, flash pages are easy to compete with because Google can't really index what's going on on the inside. It can only look at what's going on in the back end of this. So I'm, I don't think that they're going to be a very big competition. Um, you can see that their link root domains 785. That means 785 different domains linked to them um, for the URL. Not a bad deal. All right, so we've identified our keywords, and we're going to go ahead and write content. Now, when you're writing content, generally I'll use Notepad, and we'll begin to incorporate to keep your feet warm in the winter time. So that would be an that would be a sentence that I would write that would describe uh, wool socks and their benefits, and I would you know go on to elaborate on those and build out my content as stated previously. So that's it for now on keyword research. It's pretty straightforward. You just want to be able to pick keywords that are relevant to yours, um, be able to identify the ones that aren't, and then target your content to those keywords. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have a good day.